fast forward then mm. to Bobby Rush, uh, you're Bobby Rush, right, to right. Fred Hampton. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. To Fred Hampton, and Fred Hampton gets, um, we know now, assassinated by mm -hmm. the Chicago police, mm -hmm. but at the first, mm -hmm. they report it as a shootout. Right. And he's the aggressor, and they're just defending sure. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, how did you look at it from the very first? Well, I tell you, um, we, I mean, I, I knew instinctively that Fred had been killed. Mm. Fred, uh, and I knew that Fred had been, there was no way that he would have gone down without taking some people down with mm -hmm. him. He was just that type of person. One of the most uh, courageous uh, individuals, even as a young man, Fred was 21 when he was killed. Fred uh, had so many gifts, so talented, and he was very, very courageous. I remember, you know, Fred would just would not take too much off anybody. But he was a sensitive person. He really fought for the underdog, for the little people, you know. Uh, so I knew instinctively that with the, when the police came in that, that apartment that they killed Fred and that they used some kind of uh, something to, 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 to immobilize him. Uh, that morning was a morning that, you know, of course, uh, is etched in, in my spirit and in my mind. Uh, uh, we, uh, it was about 4.30, I got a call that there was a shootout at Fred's house and that the police had cordoned off the block that Fred lived on. And so I had someone to pick me up and we went to a house of a panther that lived in the next block and we were down in the basement and uh, we turned the radio on because we couldn't go down and they kept us informed through the radio and I, I heard that he was killed about 6.30 that morning. They announced that he had been killed. And um, so um, um, at, at that point, you know, we, uh, after uh, this was still, uh, darkness was out, uh, we were, you know, and then when, when the, we, when the um, daylight came, we understood that the police had left. Mm -hmm. And so we went to the department. And I guess, you know, uh, they left because they were afraid to be in that neighborhood too long. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what the response was going to be. But in their haste to get out, they left their apartment open. Mm -hmm. And so by leaving their apartment open, that gave us an opportunity to let people in to see. Yeah, I remember seeing the little sticks oh, stuck yeah. in the bullet holes sure, on right. the outside of the door. Right, sure. And I thought to myself, there's no better way right. of showing exactly right. what happened right. here. I mean, right. it was just yeah. we had, incredible. Julian, we had, I guess it was 25,000 people to go through that apartment over in a matter of two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And we actually had tours. We had Panthers showing people, you know, how the bullets that came in and showing people that how the police said the couple of bullets uh, uh, was shot out. But, you know, everything that they, their whole case, everything that they said turned out to be lies. Mm -hmm. I remember an example in the Chicago Tribune a day or two because it came, became real controversial mm -hmm. between the state's attorney and the Panther Party. Hanrahan. Hanrahan, Edward yeah. V. Hanrahan. And Hanrahan made, we went on television, they did this big enactment, reenactment of what he said took place and how the Panthers, you know, sh uh, came and charged in these vicious Panthers. And he talked about at the at the rear door, these this is evidence of how where the Panthers were, and he saw it looked like it was holes. Mm -hmm. But I went back and looked at looked at that back door, and what they had called in holes was nothing but nail heads, mm -hmm. you know. And I pointed this out. The Tribune had this big expose about this is, shows that the Panthers were shooting back at the police and things, mm -hmm. and it was nothing but nail heads. So their story just totally collapsed on their frantic. Uh, 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 trying to, uh, you know, trying to, trying to justify what they had done, but Fred Hampton was killed in cold blood, and we found out later that he had been drugged. That uh, the pathologist said that he had as much secondol in him as it would take to kill an elephant. Really? Yeah. So they had totally immobilized him, and then we found out later that um, that there was a uh, an informant, William mm -hmm. O'Neill, who had conspired with him. Mm -hmm. To, to kill Fred.